Right, yeah, keep working, thank you. 30 seconds to go, everyone. 30 seconds. Is there one sitting there, yeah? It's in the toothpick. Okay. 20 seconds to go, everyone to the floor, please. Thank you, okay. No, just tell her to get me a different moisturiser next time. It makes my face too shiny. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. That's enough. Thank you. That's too much, in fact. Stop. Um, can we get me a boiled egg and a packet of Monster Munch when I'm finished, please? Any Monster Munch, I'm not bothered. Uh, anything but pickled onion. They repeat on me. Are we live? Let's go. Hi, you -hoo. Hello and welcome to Wildlife Wednesdays with the Wildlife Trust. It's me. I'm the fungi guy. And hopefully today I'm going to show you a few reasons why fungi are amazing. Hopefully you can find some of your own. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to show you five things. Okay. Five things in five minutes to big ask. I'll be honest, I've practiced already. It's already more than five, but I'm going to try my best. Five things. Number one, um, that fungi are like royalty. Okay. Number two, three reasons why fungi are like Harry Potter. Ooh. Number three, I'm going to set you a little challenge to try and beat me in a competition, the world's tiniest competition. Uh, number four, from small to big, the world's biggest mushroom, one of the world's biggest fungi, uh, I've got with me to share. I found it a couple of days ago and I'm absolutely over the moon. So it's something I can share with you. And last of all, it'll be your turn. I'm going to show you how you can find fungi safely around and about in these uh, interesting times. Okay, number one, let's get on with it then. So welcome, uh, scroll. Look at that, it does, it really scrolls. Look at that, <gasps> mushroom royalty, I said. Okay, we have different kingdoms. Oh, I should say it's a science lesson, this you know. So first, tick that box. We're doing science now. We have kingdoms. We have an animal kingdom, which the humans are part of. We have um, a plant kingdom, and there are a few others as well. I'll let you uh, look into that as your research for today, the homework. But we also have a fungal kingdom. Fungi are so vast and unique and important, they have a kingdom all of their own. Ta-da! Hence, see what I did? I put a little crown on it. So there we go, fungi royalty. Okay, moving on. A very important question I get asked a lot. What is a mushroom? Okay, what is a mushroom? A mushroom is just the fruiting body of a fungus. Now we'll come to fungi in a minute and what a fungus is. It's just a fruiting body. And when I mean fruit, I don't mean something like fruit that you would eat. Uh, I've got a special sign for that. No, come back to that one later as well. Fruiting body, it's there just to help more mushrooms be made. It's there for reproduction, okay? Like lots of living things, they, they produce seeds, they go off and try and make more flowers or more mushrooms. It's the fruiting body. Let me try and explain a little bit more. Oh, this is a good one while I'm on my journey. Uh, so I said it's the fruiting body of a, a fungus, okay? A mushroom is, a type, is a, a type of fungus. Here's a fungus. Here's a, something, a ballerina wax cap. If I have two, now I've got fungi. It's just plural. Fungus for one, fungi for more than one, okay? For plural. All right, moving on. Let's have a look. Back to that little analogy of the fruiting body. So it's a little bit like an apple on a tree. The apple is the fruit of the tree. You can take off. The tree, the tree lives on, of course. It carries on living because that's the main body of it. The same with a fungus. A mushroom might be eaten by a wild animal or insects, invertebrates, or even humans, but the fungus continues to live on underground. I've got a little diagram here to try and explain. Now then, oh, I've got a science word for you. I've missed it. I might get another chance. Okay, I've just realized, looking at my picture. Uh, fungi is made up, and a mushroom is made up, of a mass network of something called mycelium. Your first science word for the day. There it is, look. Got it on a stick and everything. Mycelium. And it's a bit like it's underground. It's underground all of the time, all year round. But only when it's the right time to fruit, once or twice a year, sometimes more, it will pop up those mushrooms to make more seeds, more spores. So it's the fruiting. It, it's the, um, the mycelium is the fungus itself. And it's a little bit like cobwebs are almost like string underground, okay? They're very, very tiny. You can't even see them with the naked eye. But when you get lots together, it makes this cotton wool effect. And then when the time is right, it swells and it will make a mushroom, okay? That's what a fungus is. Okay, let's have a look. Now, a mushroom is one type of fungus, but we have lots of types. We have cups, we've got uh, tongues, corals, stars, balls, brackets. 
There are all different types of fungi, uh, and that's what makes them amazing. It's not just mushrooms. They're just one type. But fungi can be in lots of different ways. And these are the ones I want to focus on today because these are the ones you might find in your garden or on a, a, a very close walk or in the woods. OK, so that's these. This is what's amazing. They all have different ways of releasing their spores. And you would find another way of mentioning it. Spores, which is the word for seeds for mushrooms. Essentially, it's their seeds. I'll come back to that later as well. Moving on. I don't know how I'm doing for time. I reckon I'm on five minutes. So start fact. Good time for that. Mycelium. If you imagine this is a block of soil in the woods, there is so much mycelium here, this is the equivalent of five miles of mycelium, just in, in a cubic inch like this of soil in the woods beneath us. Mycelium are under our feet all the time, especially in the woods, connected to trees, plants, grasses. Incredible, incredible network. They call it the wood wide web. That's a good one to research. Okay, that was my star fact, moving on. Number two, three reasons why fungi like Harry Potter. Number one, the names of the fungi have some, uh, just sound like Harry Potter spells. They're wonderful. For instance, got to be wand. Okay. Caprinus comatus. Can you see? That's a real mushroom. And another one, I'll do one more. Xylaria polymorpha. <laughs> see that? Little Harry Potter. So that's number one. They sound like them, the spells. Brilliant. Number two, um, some of the mushrooms actually look like characters. Hang on, I've got a list. To make it easy for myself. There we go. Some of them actually look like characters. There's one called the Elephant Saddle. I've done a little video on that on YouTube if you look up my name. And it looks like a Death Eater all curled up and crinkled. It's amazing. Have a little look at that. But number three, the most important reason why really they are like Harry Potter is because lots of fungi, more than half the fungi that exist in the whole world, are recyclers. They are soil magicians. For all those trees that fall over in the, in the, in the woods, in the wind, in storms, or because they're dead and dying, branches, twigs, leaves, horns, feathers, even people, bones, they all need to be decomposed, recycled. And what does it? Fungi, of course. They turn that, they take all the nutrients out of it, put it in the ground and make wonderful, incredible soil. They are soil magicians. They're agents of decay and they're amazing at doing that. Without that soil, this world wouldn't exist the way that it does, if at all. So moving on. We've done Harry Potter. Another star fact. <gasps> Think about that recycling for a moment. Think about autumn when all those leaves come down. If we didn't have fungi recycling all those leaves, our leaves would be up to here. We'd have to swim to school every day in leaves because where else would they go? It's the fungi that recycle them. Amazing. All right, moving on. Number three, can you beat me? All right, three out of five things I've covered. Can you beat me? It's a tiny little challenge. So small, but it's fun. Okay, it's a little game. Uh, true or false, okay? This is where you get to play along at home. I've got four fungi names here. Only one of them is false. Three of these are real names. Soapy Knight, Lemon Disco, Octopus Stinkhorn, and the Prince's Pimples. All right, I'm going to give you three seconds to decide which you think is false. If you're correct, you beat me. If you're wrong, I win the competition. Are you ready? Three. Two. You pick one. Here we go. Let's reveal the answers. Soapy Knight, true or false? It's true. It's a real one. What about Lemon Disco? Oh, so true. It's a real one. Octopus Stinkhorn, is this the one you chose? If you did, you're also wrong because it's the Prince's Pimples that are false. Those are real fungi names. Isn't that brilliant? Okay, let's move on, move on. Oh, this is exciting. Just two days ago on my little isolation walk with my boys, they stopped to look at a horse and, you know, give it a pet and stuff. I stopped in my tracks because by the horse's hooves, I spotted the remnants, the remains of one of the biggest fungi that grow in the whole world. It's a giant puffball. As you can see, this picture is real. It's not a full, oh, I can go underneath. Hello. This is a, a, a real sized thing that happens. It starts about this big, and it's a, a regular size. You would find them a, a, a giant puffball, like a skull, but they can grow bigger than a football, and even as big as a meter wide. Now, I found one not that big, and it's not that impressive anymore because it stopped being big and solid and white. And after months and months and months, it's turned into a big piece of sponge. Okay, and here it is. Don't, don't be don't be not impressed because this is amazing that I should see this. I'm so pleased. And they're, they're not that common, so I was especially pleased to find it. But here's the thing. Here's the mega star fact on this one. Okay. It has more spores, that word again, more seeds than any other living organism in the world. A giant puffball. You ready for the number? Seven trillion spores sit with inside this. And if every spore, get this now, yeah, a little bit of maths as well. 
If every spore was a second in time and you had to hold your breath, you'd be holding your breath for 200,000 years. Thank you. And as a little example, this is why it's clever and cool even though you found it like this. It's light as a feather. It's turned to almost a sponge. But that's so that it becomes like a, a dispensing machine. It tumbles along in the, in, the, in the fields. Horses, hooves stand on it. And they puff out incredible amounts of spores. Usually can't see them. If you can see spores, it's because there's not tens, not dozens, not hundreds, thousands and maybe millions at once. I'm going to try and give this a puff. Are we ready? Whoa, you see that? That is millions of spores doing its job. Look at that. Wow. That's absolutely amazing. I'm chuffed to bits with that. Let's finish. Number five. Oh, there's a person holding his breath up for 200,000 years. Uh, your turn. How I can help you find some fun. Oh, we'll come back to that in a minute. So look, we're in lockdown. Uh, hopefully you have a garden. If not, that's fine. I have a yard. I don't have any grass at all to speak of, but that doesn't mean you can't create or look for fungi. At these conditions, it's quite warm and dry at the moment. Mushrooms don't really like that fungi. They need it to be damp and moist. But you can look in your area, look on fence posts. There used to be trees, of course. So you might find fungi rotting down. There might be blobs, jellies, cups. There's even one that look like eyelashes I've just, just thought about. Uh, if you've got a garden, have a look. If there's any wood chip, if you've got wood chip under a trampoline, check it out right now. There's a very special mushroom that grows around April time. Um, that's really cool. That might be growing there. Um, but something you can do, everybody can do this, is create a little log pile. It's hard to grow mushrooms in grass, mushrooms like we might see in fields in the woods. They don't really work like that. They're little tricky little numbers. But you can invite fungi into your garden or wherever you have you live by grabbing small sticks and logs, a mixture of old and new, make a little log pile, and then it might take days, weeks, months, or maybe even years for some of them, but they will get taken over by fungi bit by bit, and you'll see loads of different types, and they'll be rotting them down and recycling because they're soil magicians. So that's how you can do it in your home. I will mention this. If you do find any mushrooms, of course, please don't ever, ever eat a mushroom that you find. Please only ever eat fungi and mushrooms that you buy in the shops, okay? Because some are very poisonous, and some can even kill you. So it's a very serious point now. If you have handled fungi or touched any, make sure you wash your hands. Don't put your hands in your mouth, okay? Um, one thing you might spot, I need to mention this, tomorrow is St. George's Day. And there's a mushroom dedicated to that name, the St. George's Mushroom, because it comes out around this time. They are out. If you have a garden or overlook a field, have a look. If there's a dark ring in the grass, you might have a circle of St. George's Mushrooms. That's pretty cool. Investigate those. They're really nice. That's it. I think I've finished. Is there anything left? Oh, yeah, that's the big poisonous sign. I've done that. There we go. That's it. Listen, I'm a little bit over in time. I'm sorry about that. But I hope you, if you stayed, well done. And I hope you learned something from it. Thanks very much. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. And take care. Bye. I'm going to walk away. Bye. And I'm going to lean in just to press the button up there.